Look, that's our cruise ship. <laughs> We are on our way to an Old Town Trolley Tour. <laughs> That's where we're going. There's a rooster. We never know, you guys. We never know. How many of you folks have been to Key West before? Raise your hand for me. Lots of you all have been to Key We have some new people. About half and a half, I think, almost. That's fantastic. So I have some I have some other people that can help guide you today. We're in hurricane season now. It's only six months of the year we get a rainy season. If we're lucky, we might get a rain to hold us throughout the year. Well, back in time anyway. Key West is the driest city in Florida. We only average 28 inches of rainfall a year. And there are no lakes, rivers, or streams in the Keys. Fresh water sources from Mother Nature. Every once in a while, they find a natural well bubbling up from the coral stone. On your left is Kermit's Key Lime Shop. He makes everything out of Spanish lime. We call them Key Limes now. We're on Green Street. It's easy to remember. Kermit the Frog is green. And the harbor is still right there. You've got a little bit more of the harbor to go. We were only able to jog a little bit of it. On your left hand side, an old tobacco warehouse from that first millionaire, William Curry. In that fire of 1886, he had $100,000 worth of loose leaf Cuban tobacco. And he saved the building when they would be rolling the start. Almost everything around here went up in flames. Two more Curry mansions coming up on your left hand side, side by side actually. Brother and sister Curry. The first one is the Hard Rock Cafe. Size of their homes they built. Well, their dad was a millionaire. He left them all that money in the 1800s. So that hard rock is pretty ornate. And then next door, the Helling's house in brick. That was that was smart of her. That was Eleanor Curry. She told every man in this town she was not going to marry anybody that wouldn't build her a brick house. Okay, we got to for Helling. Smart, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. Um, it just depends. Like two or four bars open now. The earliest happy hour on, on the island. Which is kind of funny actually now that I think of it. Because we're going to pass another bar that actually opens at 6 o'clock in the morning. And they're open right now. But most of the ones down here, folks, will be open by 11. Yeah. Some of them by 10, but most of them by 11 o'clock. On your left hand side, that Fly Navy building is the tallest building in the entire city. So it's kind of interesting down here. Some of you folks that live in South Florida are familiar with all the high rises that we have in Florida, but you don't have them here in Key West. We could anchor them into our coral stone folks, but we're not allowed to build a big concentration of homes. We don't allow to have the population. By law, we have to be able to evacuate the entire population of all of the Florida Keys within 24 hours of a hurricane. Because of that, we aren't allowed to have the big building. We're not allowed to have big cuts. The story is true, and it goes like this. In 1982, the federal government put a blockade at the top of the Keys, over 100 miles from here, looking for cocaine smuggling and illegal immigrants from Cuba. That was the early 80s. You all might have remembered those stories in South Florida. Well, it blocked off our way of life. It was destroying our economy. And we asked them to take it down. The federal government said no. We sued them in court and we lost. This time, our city fathers came back here and devised a plan. Now they go back up to the checkpoint, armed with a stale loaf of Cuban bread. And they smash it over the head of the guy at the checkpoint, telling him 
very same guy. <laughs> if you surrender to the United States as a foreign country, you're eligible for foreign aid. Uh -huh. Ah, folks, we found a loophole in the law. <laughs> so we applied in the amount of a billion dollars. We haven't seen a penny of the money. Never will. But we got what we wanted. The publicity of that story went around the country. It went around the world. They took down the checkpoint. But we remained the Conk Republic. Every April 23rd, we go down to our harbor and throw stale Cuban bread at the Navy. <laughs> and they shoot their water cannons back at us. <laughs> we surrender, get together, have a drink, and start Conk Republic days. Ten days of parties every year, folks. <laughs> That's every April 23rd. Look it up. Conk Republic days. We even have a motto. We succeeded where others failed. <laughs> Go Conk Republic! Now you're going to see that around the island all day long, that flag. This is our nice little sandy beach. But we don't normally get sand down here, you guys. That barrier reef out there prevents us from having a surf at the shoreline. It blocks it. So we have to buy this sand from other parts of Florida and the Bahamas. And we restore this when we need to. This was all poured in brand new sand over Christmas last year. Coming up, the southernmost point of the continental United States. This buoy actually marks officially 90 miles to Cuba. From this spot right here, folks. You are officially 90 miles to Cuba. You're closer right here to a foreign country than you are a Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> Wrap your head around that for a minute. There you go. go with the flow. <laughs>
smile. So this is our view with all the lights off at night. Oh God, it is so dark in here with the lights off at night. It is crazy. We're on our way to Cozumel and this is uh this is our view at 10:01 at night. There we go. There's some lights. This is our this is our this is our balcony. You can't really see it cuz it's so dark out. It looks literally like a mirror. We locked the balcony, but this is our room. It's kind of a mess right now because we just got back from a party. Yeah, we just got back from a party and we're about to go to another party, guys. All right. <laughs> Until tomorrow when we're in Cozumel. Toodles!